for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey yo, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, Dixon Medicine, best Bye bye. Hey, it's your best bye bye. What's happening, buddy boy? Not much. How are you doing? Well, it's weird. I'm, you know, I'm normally glad uh, to see the week um, almost almost at an end, but we've had the week off uh, Jimmy's show this week. Oh. So now it's like the end. Yeah, your end of your vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but good times, you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. And you had the birthday week this week. You, you get let down really easily. When the football season ends after the Ooh, Super Bowl, you just crash. So, ooh, it was your birthday. Tough. You had the yeah. softball game, your birthday. David yeah. Ongar came in here and oh, dag, yeah. sang it up for you. Sing, dag, yeah. softball, yeah. Anderson, sing. Now, dag. I don't, uh, I, you know, Drew, what? I, don't, uh, I don't tell people it's my birthday, and uh, I'm not really that into it because, you know, it's pressure. People coming up, how you doing? No, it's not good. For, Yeah, for you, anybody that... I don't like people talking to me about stuff. No, you don't like people like noticing you. Mm-hmm. It's like Adam. Hey, Adam. Huh? What? Uh, no, I'm yeah. not here. Everyone, right? listen to me. Yeah. Except yeah. Now I know. I know. I have this because I went out to lunch with a guy on my birthday who didn't know it was my birthday, mm-hmm. and I picked up the check just because I didn't want to get into. It's my of course, birthday. You're, you're appropriately resentful, but it's all right. No, no, I'm no, not no, not no, resentful no, at all. No, no. I just realized I don't want. Uh, I don't like that kind of tension, but no, I do. I'll, I'll I love forget. softball. I'll never forget. So, <laughs> I don't know why this stays with me so much, but when you and I were, we were th- there's this convention every year, and we got stuck at it one year when Loveline TV was supposed to be a Fox show. Mm-hmm. And we went to this room with a bunch of television station owners or something, and some guy from Michigan goes, Hey, Adam, you know Steve Kahila? <laughs> you're like, Steve Kahila? Remember that? Mm-hmm. And you were like, and you were like, we're bummed out about it. You were like, freaked out. That the guy knew you and had called you out in a room, and that was like very unpleasant for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that was interesting because it was it was a very sort of non-moment moment. Yeah. And yet for you, it was very unpleasant. Was it unpleasant for me? You kept talking about it. Yeah, it really just stayed with me because I was impressed that bothered you. Well, why did it bother me? Because we were in a room of people, and someone sort of singled me singled out. Singled you out. Yeah. Yeah, I like the like the fly under the radar. Yeah. For a guy who does television. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? No, it is weird, but if, if anyone knows me, they know I would rather not do something than do something. Uh-huh. Thank you. Danny? Yes? You're 13, except for the radio. Yeah. I love the radio. I know. Because no one's seeing you. That's right. I don't have to be seen. Mm-hmm. Danny? But they have to listen. Yeah. You have to listen, Danny. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. What's up? All right. My girlfriend, she likes it up, but, you know, anally. <laughs> and I don't use condoms because all the places that I can get them, everybody knows my parents. Uh-huh. And I don't want to get in around town, you know, and back to my parents. Cause your parents are very prominent attorneys in your community. Yeah, I guess you could say that. But my, uh... Cool. Anyway, she likes up the butt, right? Yeah, but it's just up the butt. <laughs> she likes up the butt, right? Rough, up the butt. You can't, Wait you a minute, you Danny. can't keep it together. <laughs> Danny, where's she like it? Anally. Uh-huh. Anal-wise? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm afraid that... He keeps me going with the yes, sir, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging in with him. Well, I'm from Florida. There's some confusion as to where she likes it. Where's she like it, Danny? Up the butt. Up the butt. <laughs> All right. I said anally. We cleared that up. Anal-wise <laughs> and anally, she likes it up the butt. Ah. I'm oh, in. All right. Now... The condoms are hard for you to get because anywhere you can get them, they know your your parents, right? Yes, sir. All right. So what are we going to do about this? I don't know, but and the other thing is, Mason jar. I'm afraid that I'm on. I'm wanting to know that if is it possible for me to get a disease without the condoms anally? Anally, <laughs> anal wise or penal wise? Penal ease or anal wise? Penanally? You're more likely to give something to her than she is to give it to you. Oh. Yeah. You know what I like about Danny? Danny, for the first time, I've never heard on a show, he goes, and, uh, well, what I'm a wanting to know. <laughs> wanting. I, it was like, uh. Green Acres. Talking to Hoyt Axton. Uh-huh. I thought he was going to break out in song. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm a, a wanting anal-wise, 
What I'm wanting to know uh, uh, up the butt wise. <laughs> I'm that, a butt that was, a man. By the way, a bogus call. That's why we're goofing around. Him. Yeah. Katie? Yes? You're 14? Yes. What's up? Um, um, well, my brother wanted you to know that he just bought a Blood, Sweat, and Tears album. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's so interested to see if there's a resurgence of sales. I'm going to uh, move some of that product. That's the last thing I do. Uh, but um, I want to know, oh, well, I guess I want you to kind of go on a rant about Wicca because... My friend wants to join, and I don't want her to join. And we had an argument, and all I had as a comeback was it was a bunch of fat chicks that like to recycle. Ooh, that's what you said. That's like, true. Oh, like yeah. a, but I need more than that because <laughs> that's, that's all I had to go on. That's all I have. Well, every time, thank you, Katie. Every time we speak to a, a woman who wants to get into Wicca, and we ask them about you know casting spells and love potions, they go, no, no, it's you not understand. about that. No, it's the earth. Yeah, the Wiccan's like about, about the earth. The earth and, it's yeah, about the earth. Yeah, she said it was about, like, um... Here's what it's about, though. It, it's, it's about being mad at your yeah, folks. Yeah, it's about suffering or surviving abuse. Not having prom dates. It, that it, kind it, of stuff. It's very close to the goth thing, would you say, in terms of they can go either way? Yeah. They make a choice. They're changeable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Does that still exist, that goth thing? I don't know. Went out with Columbine, I think. Yeah. Here's the thing. People who have religion because, oh, you know, my parents are Episcopalian and so are their grandparents and that kind of stuff. Like, there's the kind of stuff, there's the religion you are that you were born with just like your nationality. And those people I leave alone. Right. They're, they're, it's they're, their culture. Yeah. They're marginally less into it each generation <laughs> that smartens up. Their, their cranium grows a little bit and they get out of the old world and they dust settles and they're not quite as into it as the generation before them but uh, that's just a cultural thing that's what they do it's like hey this is we we eat this because this is our culture we listen to this because this is our culture uh the people that pick up a religion midstream pick up something when they're 15 or 22 or 40 well, you there's the, always trouble join the taliban yeah joining the taliban uh converting I mean, a lot of people convert to Judaism just because, you know, these are shicks of blonde chicks who don't want to convert to Judaism, but they have to because uh, the guy's mom is going to plot if she doesn't before they get married. So she just rolls her eyes and goes to uh, Hebrew class. But anybody who converts, anybody who finds Jesus Christ at born again, you know, the guys who find it in jail or on Skid Row or whatever, whatever it is, I don't trust these people. This means something's amiss in their life. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I, I think you would, you would say if somebody finds a spiritual life for themselves and keeps it to themselves. Shuts fine, up about fine. it. Yeah. But somebody who has to impose it on you. Even if they find a spiritual life for themselves, that's fine. But if they find Wicca or they find Jehovah or they find... Well, they, that's coming out. Born that's, that's, again. That's, even if they quietly become born again, I don't trust them. Something went wrong. Something went horribly Don't you wrong have to in their life. Witness when you've been born again. Uh, I guess you, mean you have to sort of you have to you, you have to spread the good news, yeah. as it were. Uh. I don't know, Katie. Yeah. What's wrong with this girl? Okay, well, she's depressive. Yeah. And like she shaves her head willingly. No, nice. All right. Like this is a haircut. Big gal. No. No. Well, Wick will pack some weight bald. onto her. Bald. Anything else start with a B? Yeah. She's All right. Just Oh, Katie. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe uh, you two are going different directions. Well, she used to be atheist, and then she switched to agnostic, and now she's, like, wanting to join Wicca. And... She sounds like somebody who's really struggling to find meaning and to find probably an identity, too. And that, that's, that's, you know, she really could benefit from some professional help, I suspect. Not to say that she shouldn't be well, free to... Well, she goes to a therapist. Does she? Good. Mm. Good. She should keep with that. And look, you can be your friend as long as she doesn't uh, start getting weird on you. She starts well, getting she weird has. on you. Like she tries to like tell me like she's like, oh, it empowers women. And All right, well, listen, move on. True. How many people you hang out with now that you hung out with when you were fourteen? Uh, let me count. Uh, zero. Yeah. See, so I only have like eleven guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I know, but but other most people. You know, there are plenty. You, you have your best friends when you're 13. You have your best friends when you're when you're when you're nine. You have your best friends at 21. But you know what? They all don't make it. Well, and the people that remain your friends, you see like twice a year, and they're they're friends. And they're just well, the same you, as they were when you're you 19. Might, you might see them more than twice but, a year. But you know what I mean? but that's not, the, not you're not hanging out 
the people you hang out when you're 14. Uh, yeah. No, most normal. Yeah, people. I do. But even, people even people. if even if you, you, you hang out, you you employ them. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I employ them, but that that forces them to hang out with me. Uh. They call me Maestro and Hefe. That's fine. Your Royal Highness. The, the, the point is, is people go different directions. This that's happens at 14. Yeah. But it's that's nice fine. that she's concerned about her friend, that she sees it as a sign of trouble, and yes. it probably is. All right. Maria? Uh, yeah. you 15? Yeah. What's up? Hello? Mm-hmm. We hear you. Okay. Oh, I was just to talk? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Can I, I translate that for you, Adam? What? What? Am I supposed to talk? <laughs> what oh, she said. I, 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 I don't know. I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, if you I'll don't, if you don't interrupt Adam, you're gonna have a difficult time no, here. So go shut ahead. Up. Go ahead. Just Sorry. Go ahead. Um. Okay, I was raped about two months ago. Who did and, it? Um. I don't know. You don't know? I didn't know who he was. Was All it right. a violent rape, like in a park kind of thing, or? Uh, park? yeah, I was walking home from school and Oof. a guy pulled his car up and um, he was threatening me and stuff, and mm. he made me, you know, he raped me in the car. Wow. He threatened you from inside the car? He pulled down his window. With a, with a, do you have a gun or a knife or something? He had a jackknife. And I was just kind of scared because he was kind of starting to get loud, so... So you kind of froze? Yeah. And now, now that kind of, that's a victim reaction that you're, you're manifesting there. So where were you victimized much, much earlier in your life? Um, my mom's friend molested me for two years. Okay, well, there you go. Your mom's friend, male friend? Yeah. Yes, he was a male. All right. Now, have you ever had post-traumatic stress disorder or anything like that from all that? Um. Well, um. After the rape, I've been having like waking up in the middle of the night. Yeah. But I have um. I haven't really been around men much. My mom doesn't let me date, and I've never chosen to. She doesn't. She doesn't let you date. No. She just uh, lets your lets her friends molest you. Oh, she and, doesn't and, and, know. She doesn't know about that. Yeah, yeah but she she knows she's hanging out with uh, criminals. My mom's religious, no. No, we well, your mom's an idiot. All right, Maria, look, you're li liable to get a lot of symptoms after having been but, raped. Well, I'm pregnant. That's the problem. Uh-huh. Well, that's one symptom. <laughs> did you call the police? No. You didn't report this or anything like that? No. How long ago did it happen? Two months. Two mm -hmm. months ago. End of March. That's two months, right? Yeah. You think you could identify the guy? Yeah. I remember him very well. You do? I think you need to make a police report. That's, Absolutely. That's fine. Well, well, here's the problem. Um, now that I'm pregnant, I don't think my mom's gonna believe that I was raped. Well, it doesn't matter what she believes. No, the problem is I don't know what to do with the baby. I mean, I, I can't. I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if I could do like an at-home abortion. Like I heard of like, like it's kind of dangerous. But if you jump really far down the stairs mm -hmm. or like hit yourself hard, you can um. Maria. Oh, do you live in a two-story? Bill, it doesn't sound like you're living in a two-story building. Well, we have an apartment building. My mom's a nurse, so we're not poor. You have stairs? Yeah, we're on the third floor. Yeah, but there are people who live under you. Those are their stairs. <laughs> no, there's stairs. Okay. You there's have like, like a townhouse? No, no, no. Okay, there's the elevator, right? There's the elevator. That's what I'm saying. The stairs. No, but then, then no, there's stairs also. Like, let's say you want to walk with there's. I, I know, but those aren't the stairs of your house. Those are the stairs that lead to your house. Those aren't your stairs. I'm allowed to jump down them. No, 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 no. Those aren't your personal abortion <laughs> stairs. Those are the apartment's abortion stairs. You understand? It's, it's like that rec room they have down by the laundry thing. Right. You can't just throw a party there every weekend. You want to have some guys over for some... For you sign up. Mm -hmm. You know, play a little bumper pool. Maybe watch a playoff game. You sign up That's down right. there. Oh, that is bad times. One. All right, where was she? One. Oh, Maria. That's right. Maria? Mm-hmm. Now, throwing yourself down yeah. the stairs no, there, there, there is nothing you can do to induce an abortion. But I don't get why that would Maria, work. do why? not even consider anything like your... your, your you, here's the problem. You can't really throw yourself downstairs anyway. You have to sort of put your arms even up and if stop you, yourself. Even if you hurled yourself out the third-story window, you'd end up possibly dead, tons of injuries. Hmm. Not baby a, would not, live. Baby would live. And go an on to kill. Oh, no. It's true. So, ironically, you, now on the other hand, you can take yourself to a Planned Parenthood. That's right. Or some other local 
family planning. I'm sure there. Free abortion. I'm sure there's county funding available for various kinds of interventions. Listen, Maria, you've, yeah. you've been uh, you've been through a lot in your short life. Oh, okay. I know you think you're okay, but we'll tell you when you're okay yeah. and you're not okay. Okay, people don't think about throwing themselves downstairs. No, no. Uh, Plan Parenthood, and you tell them everything. Uh, but what about my mom? She just won't. don't worry about your mom. She, you go She's by not yourself. Find out anything. She'll... You go by yourself. You oh go my with God, a friend. I do not know my mom. She's this lady. I just told you. Don't how worry she gonna about find, your mom. How's she going to find out about it? She. I mean. The, how? You don't know how hard it was for me to even get the phone up into my room. She watches my every move. She. Look, she thinks I'm a sinner. Well, listen. Uh, get one of your friends and go down to Planned Parenthood tomorrow. With my friends. Somebody to go with you. Have any I friends? I, no. No friends. I don't like the girls in my school. Okay, then go. Uh, <laughs> I hate these parents so badly. It's like, oh, how much can you? You know what I mean? You, first off, yeah. mom's a nurse, so she, you know she's nuts. Yeah, right, tells me, give, me all nurses are insane. Let me give you. Let me give you a number. It's one eight hundred. Shut up. She doesn't have a pen. Four two two. Shut up. She got to go. Four four five three. I'm going to tell you again in a couple minutes. Go ahead. I repeat the numbers. Other people hear them besides her. I know, but now I'm talking. You're saying right. whatever my talking. All right, go ahead. Drew, you got to get tell people to grab a pen. You're going to give the number out. Give people a second to get their prep on. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I don't know you, you push through, and then and then you try to stuff it in if someone else is talking. I'm just doing four, two, three. Like, <laughs> you got some deal with the devil. You have to give it out three times a week. All right, relax. Nurses are nuts. Born again nurses are are super nuts. And then, then you got to bring it home, the rapist guy. Hey, Maria? Yeah. You get that number, baby? What's the, oh, I'm sorry. He was sort of fast. Yeah. Ready? 1-800. Um, one sec. I don't have a... True. <laughs> True. You saying ready and then saying the number. Yeah. It's like if someone's sleeping and you go, ready, go. And the person just starts to sit up and fart and scratch <laughs> themselves. Like, go. What, what are we doing? They're moving towards the, the floor. <laughs> True is great. Ready? 1-800-226-4444. Like, uh, no, not ready. Not ready. Maria? Yeah. You ready now? Um, I'm sorry, but I sort of have a problem here. Yeah, see, listen. What's the problem? Teenagers Wait, your mom don't, show up? They don't have pens. Hell, Maria? Yeah. What's the problem? I can't find anything. Uh. Um, I guess, oh, shoot. Thanks for illustrating my point. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Did I do something wrong? No, no. you're doing a great job. I keep, <laughs> I I keep telling perfect. Drew, we can't shotgun out these numbers. People don't have pens. Oh, I can find one in a couple minutes. I'm sorry. Right, you, you have an eye, eyeliner, pencil, or anything? I'm not allowed to wear makeup. Okay. Well, you find a pen, and uh, Drew will give it out later. Drew, you, kids don't write things down these days. Evidently not. You have computers and fancy things. No, that's right. They got they got fancy uh, memo pads. Molly? Yeah, hi. Yay, hey, you're 25. I'm so excited about you guys. Oh, my God. What's up? Um... Okay, when me and my boyfriend have sex, we start out with no condom first for a little bit, and mm-hmm. then when he starts to feel like he's getting ready, he'll put one on, and I'll be okay down there for a little while, but then, you know, I'll start to get really dry and the friction, and it just hurts so bad that we have to stop. Have you tried different different types of condoms? Um, No, actually, I don't know. We really like the brand that we have. What do you use? Lately. What do you use? We use um, Trojan. And w- what is it you like if it's causing you problems? Well, it was okay up until just as of lately. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Are you on, did you start uh, like Depo Provera shots or anything like that recently? I, no, actually, I've been off of that for over a year now. And any new medication of any type? Um, nope. Well, what, what, what's the part where you have sex for a while and then at the halfway point he puts the condom on? Yeah. Well, I don't know. We both, when I was on the depo shot, we didn't use condoms because, well, we, I don't know, it just it worked out really well. Hey, Molly. That was really good. Yeah, us. Molly, you were on birth control then. That's why you didn't use the condoms. That's all right. Exactly. All right. But <laughs> now you're not on birth control, so now you got to use the condoms. He can't put his penis in you without a condom on. But it's just... I don't know. I think he loses it if he puts it on right away. Uh-huh. Well, he's impregnating you in the meantime while he's not having the condom. Well, on. we've been possibly doing this way for four years. You're very lucky. <laughs> well, not necessarily. He's not a dribbler, obviously. No, he's not. He's not. Yeah. All right. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. It wouldn't wouldn't make him a bad guy. I think <laughs> we were I, sus- I suspect Drew's a dribbler. 
Everybody's a dribbler. <laughs> Not me. Except Adam with the gaskets from hell. Not me. <laughs> And and listen, you could take a down feather and stick it to the end of my I'm, rod after I'm gonna do that. two hours I'm, of watching I'm, Big Bus porn, and it would just drift harmlessly to the ground. Oh Absolutely. Not a dribbler. Mm. Okay, so, so that's our next challenge. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. And get in here. <laughs> All right, so Molly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So what changed? I have no idea. In fact, this just happened the other night. I hardly ever see him. We we get together on the weekends, so we maybe have sex like once a week. Mm. Are you still and, into this guy? Yeah, I yeah. would say so because. Uh, <laughs> Why do you hardly see the guy? What? Why do you hardly see him? Um, I work during the week. I live like oh, 40 miles away from yeah. him. You guys been going out for four or five years? Yep. Maybe. Maybe. You're not, why aren't you getting married? Maybe the relationship is drying up. Yeah, <laughs> good one, Drew. Really a touchy High five. Yeah. Him. Yeah, maybe touchy. Maybe it's run its course. Oh, don't say that. Yeah. yeah. I think, don't say that. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of the feels like that. Yeah. yeah. Just feel that way, doesn't it? Yeah, especially the way she doesn't want to like touch it, get near She's that like, oh, feeling. Don't say that. Don't make me feel that feeling I know I'm having. Right. Yeah. I know. It's funny when women. So it's not get the that condom. Feeling. No way. It's not the condom. No way. Women do that. They go like, "Paul's great. I really like Paul." And you go, "But you're not attracted to him." And they go, "Ah." I know. It's like, <laughs> no, don't make me f submit that. <laughs> But I love He's him. The greatest He's great. Four years. He's great. Well, He's are great. you telling me I've wasted four years? No. Yeah. yeah you're, you're, you're wasted He's the great. next two that you right. insist upon. All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break. Uh, Wait, let's give Maria the phone number before we go to break. All right. Hold on. Maria? Mm. All right. 1 800. Oh, <laughs> please, Drew, relax. Did you find a pen? Okay. I found deodorant. I don't. I can write. Okay. On the mirror yeah, with that's deodorant good. On the wall. That nice. that's good. Is it the spray on or the roll on? The the push kind. Well, the push kind. The, 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 you know the cut. Well, I guess you really wouldn't know. It right. squeezes out through. There, the... You don't have a uh, charcoal briquette or a burnt stick or anything. I'm not allowed to use fire. Not allowed to use fire. Uh -oh. What about to ward off animals? <laughs> Let's say a grizzly attacked you in your room. Would you would would you well, be able to light a match? No. Not allowed to use fire. Well, okay, I'm listen. Not. You you go to Planned Parenthood tomorrow, okay? Where are they? Well, they're in your area. You just, just call, open the phone. Call the phone. Just open the phone book. All right. Okay, well, I, are you are you allowed to read? Does your mom let you read? Christian books. Christian books. Phone, phone books. Phone Christian okay. books. Yeah. Kumbaya. Yeah. They advertise churches and uh, religious novelty stores in there. It's all there. All right. Give that number out, Drew. One eight hundred four two two. Four four five three. That is the number for what? For child help. Okay. We'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Drew? You know, we were talking about abortions a minute ago, and last night this came up, too, in relation to a, a tea called Penny Royal. Remember this? Yeah. This woman wanted to take that for an abortion. and uh, It's on the Internet. It's on the Internet, and what I read about it, the oil of this uh, compound, of this herb, I guess it really is, uh, can be very dangerous and potentially fatal. Yeah. People should not be screwing around with this. Well, is that what they would use in olden days? I've never heard of it being used. The this little, the brief little blurbs that are on the web allege that it can, you know, cause an abortion, but well, how, also how, death. How would they abort in days of yore? I don't know. It's a good question. Coat hanger? Yeah, they didn't have coats or hangers. Uh, yeah. What would they use? Spear. I think the coat hanger. A lance. Was, I, a lance. Think, uh, I think the coat hanger was around a little before the coat was. Yeah. I'm pretty sure because you don't have to hang a coat on a coat hanger, Drew. You could hang a tee. Right, right. Or Suit of blouse. armor. Suit of armor. Well, no. Uh, who says a coat has to be made out of wire? Coat hanger could have been made out of wood. Mail. They use them to break into their uh, chariots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And uh, they use them as antennas on their the wagons. Their, yeah. It's great. <laughs> I missed the wire coat hanger. It used to have so many uses. 
Yep. I used to like it when guys, I like a guy who drives a car that's got stuff on it on the outside that he's put there. I, uh, the coat hanger antenna was always a good good look, but the, once in a while you'd see the coat hanger used to tie something off, like the bumper that was oh, hanging. Sure. Oh, yeah. Coat hanger was used like a bailing wire. That was nice. The other look, and this is uh, this is that little, I'm going to write a book of uh, how you know you're a loser kind of thing. I saw one of these cars the other day. It's uh, it's when the uh, wind wing gets punched out and it gets replaced with foil or cellophane. Red cellophane. Yeah, like it's always a different color. And this is the older brother to the rear tail lights that get punched out and again get some weird red cellophane duct taped on there. Or just red tape. Some of a red. Yeah. Or maybe like paper. Yeah, like some some red tape uh, on there. Like at a certain point, doesn't it become more work to do a sort of half-assed, illegal, dangerous patch job on your car than it does just to Snap actually have it fixed? Snap on some plastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good look, Steve. Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. You know the other look? Uh, yeah. A real quick question yeah, about uh, when girls get orgasms, mm -hmm. like why some are louder and then some girls are real quiet about it? Mm -hmm. Like whether that was personality or? Uh, I don't know that anyone has correlated being quiet with any particular personality characteristics. Okay. Some people yeah. either that mechanism isn't hooking up in their brain or they just feel uncomfortable being loud, whatever it is. Yeah. So, what is that? I don't that know. It doesn't seem to be... It's part of that crazy spectrum that is the female human, that it's so broad, the spectrum of what the response is, right? Right. They're, they're, they're sort of, <clears throat> sort of more introverted, quiet women who do crazy novelty orgasms. And then there's women that seem more outgoing that don't seem to have as big a pop on yeah. the orgasm. And, and the but, ones, that, and the ones that do make a lot of noise claim they can't help it. Yeah. Impossible. That's right. They just stuff a pillow into their mouth or roll a tube socks or something. But I'll tell you, the, the ones that never disappoint are crazy. Hmm. Crazy will have. Probably on both spec. Yeah, yeah. Crazy will have the loud orgasm, but they have the disconcerting one. Like they're yeah. they're like, no stop, no stop. You know, that weird pushing and weird, and, you, you know, it's like that weird orgasm. It's loud, but loud in kind of a bad way, like weird. Repelling. Yeah, it's like we're pushing and recoiling and, uh, you know, stop and don't stop and getting weird, a little teeth grinding, sort of a manly orgasm. No. Hold on, wait a minute, that was a dude. Oh. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Their balls are flying no. everywhere. Wait a minute. Oh. oh, true. That's you and Jimmy. Keep no, that to yourselves. No more Jaeger for me. No more. That's it. It's a, it doesn't doesn't mix with the Robitussin. Alyssa? It just does not. Alyssa? Yeah? You're Hi. 20? Yeah. What's up? Um, hang on. Mm-hmm. Sorry. All right. What's up? Okay. So... I have a question because I had my nipples pierced. Well, I have them pierced. Hello? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what age you were molested. No, I wasn't. I'm trying to figure okay. out what, what you're talking into. Is it a soup can with some yarn on it, or is no, it a I'm phone? No, I'm trying to be quiet because my aunt's family's sleeping. Awesome. Come in here. Do you have a regular phone? No, I'm on a cell phone. You're on a cell phone. In your house? Yeah. Isn't it illegal to speak on a cell phone in your house, Drew? It's no. against the Geneva Convention. It is. Yeah. Okay, so you have your nipples pierced. Yeah. And? And, um, okay, I've had them pierced for, like, a little over a year and a half. Yeah. And, like, my, like, some of them, they, they still hurt sometimes. Uh -huh. And, um. Are they healed? Um, yeah. Okay. All right. I think so. Okay. And well, listen, you, you've got a foreign body stuck through a sensitive Ex well, right, but like my tongue's pierced and right. nothing's wrong with that one, and my belly button, and nothing's wrong with that, and I had my nose done. <laughs> okay. Like, well, you're lucky. Okay. But that's more, obviously a more sensitive that. area in the nipple, and you, you, you can damage the nerves. You can cause chronic pain. True. When that. you tell uh, like patients they have uh, pancreatic cancer, they go, do they go? But my, li I have a liver. Yes, I have, my liver doesn't have cancer. My brain doesn't have cancer. My heart doesn't have cancer. Is that their argument? Yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be uh, Alyssa's argument. Yeah. Hey, Alyssa, what's wrong with you? What happened to you? No, nothing. Why do you have all these piercings? I'm just addicting. <laughs> They're addicting. Uh -oh. huh. Physical abuse. Who what? abused you? No one. No one? All right. Of course it is. 
You have to. Yeah. Well, she she said it's nine. She sounded nine, yeah. and she's got has a thousand piercings, and it's just uh, something's up. Let's find out. What age? Uh, Alyssa. Yeah. What happened when you were nine? Nothing. Did your parents split up, or did somebody? No, my parents were still together. Anybody die? You have a brother who died? No. Huh? No. No. When did you lose your virginity? When I was nineteen. Nineteen. Hmm. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nothing before that. No sex. No sex. What's your dad do? Nothing. What's the, he do for a living? Um, he sells insurance. Sells insurance. Did anybody? That's hit, abuse. Did anybody hit you growing up? Um, when I was bad, like. Okay, well that's called physical mm, abuse. What? What? Yeah. Did they hit well, you? No, with? like. Not often. All right. It doesn't have to be op- often. It has to be. Did you get a really good whooping when you were like nine or ten years old? Did I get what? A big, a bad one when you were like nine or ten years old? No. All right. We certainly no, hear like it. It's, like it's not even that. I'm just wondering about the healing. Yeah. I know. Because, like, we, we're not interested in that. We were interested in why you sound like you're nine and you have tons of piercings at age twenty. What's wrong with you? Nothing. All right. You have a relationship. You lesbian. No. You have a boyfriend? No. Why not? Why not? Um, I don't really like that. <laughs> you don't like guys? What? No, I do, but I don't like... Relationships. Even relationships. What do your parents think of all your piercings? Um, my mom doesn't like them. My dad doesn't know about my nipples. Right. Your mom doesn't like them. How's your mom? My mom? She's real, real, real conservative. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, you still living at home? Yeah. Why? Why? Because they won't let me move out. You're 20. Well, I know. I mean, I go to school. Okay. Junior college? Yeah. Um, no, I go to my um, university. University of junior college? No. Okay. I'm home for the summer. All right. Ah, oh, you go away just for school. Yeah. All right, well, that's moving out of the house. You go out of Illinois? No. No. Okay. All right, well, we're out of guesses, so uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's always great with the college. point is, let me, let me repeat what I said about the, yeah. the piercing. I mean, you putting a foreign body into, through body tissue, nerves can be stimulated, they can be chronically sensitized. It should be no surprise that people get persistent pain, persistent discomfort of various types, persistent mm. problems healing. All right. I love the part where you have to just... At a certain point, aren't isn't someone going to say, uh, "Yeah, I go to uh, University of Santa Barbara." Like at a certain point, like you go, "Tell us what school?" Yeah, yeah, you go, you go to school, uh, junior college? No, university. I like flip the question. <laughs> you you go to school in state? <laughs> no, out of state. That's uh, Arlene Francis. Uh, Seventeen questions. Uh, is this school known for its uh, sports department? Do they have a uh, they, they they play? Uh, they got a good football team. No, I'm sorry. Next question. <laughs> At a certain point, you know, just do you want to know what school she goes to? Sure. Do you think you've heard of it? No. North- do you think like if you go to Brown or Yale, you you, you pipe say, up pretty quick? Northern right? Illinois. All right. De Cal. De Cal. Alyssa. Yeah. What school do you go to? Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear Drew say that? Yeah, I did. I thought it's funny because that's where I go. Right. How come that wasn't reflected in the way you said it? I don't know. All right, baby. Have a nice day. You know, wait, wait, listen. Hope your nipples let's, fall off. Let's, let's, let's but enlighten her. <laughs> but it's great. It's like Northern Illinois. You didn't, you didn't hear Drew say that? Yeah. Didn't think that was weird? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, come on. You don't want to give it up? I'm not giving it up. Don't want to give it up? But let's enlighten her about barbed wire, shall we? No, DeKalb, she goes to Northern, she goes to DeKalb. We've been to DeKalb, or Northern, Northern Illinois, Illinois which is in DeKalb, which is in Northern Illinois. And uh, they invented barbed wire there. And they brought us Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford allegedly uh, took a dump in that town <laughs> for about 10 minutes on her way to L.A. And they make a big deal out of it. But their big deal is barbed wire and, of course, a barbed wire museum. And we were doing a college there. It was like one of the we first. We there co- twice. Remember that? What were we thinking? Yeah, yeah. It's one of the first colleges we did, and yeah. all anyone wanted to talk about was barbed wire. The second time there, it had an ass full of them. Hey, 
You know, if it wasn't for DeKalb, cows would just be wandering <laughs> on freeways and railroad tracks. Uh, you know, when, you know, during during delicate operations, cows would just be wandering into the operating room and knocking equipment over. Uh, cows would be bumping into the launch pad before we the shuttle took off. I, I There'd be cows there was, everywhere. There was Drew. a lot of discussion about World, aircraft World, carriers. World War II. You'd be hitting cows when you tried to land a plane on an aircraft carrier without the cow because they invented barbed wire and that keeps cows where they're supposed to be. Well, well, so there. The second time I was there, I just had an ass full yeah. of it. I finally told everyone, look, first off, barbs and wire both existed. <laughs> So you guys just put two things together. You understand? This is not a huge breakthrough. It, right? Yeah. Is this, is this a, a huge breakthrough when you take two things that have been around for a thousand years and decide to attach them to each other? That's not an invention. That's a combination. That's, it's like Jimmy's hot fudge and ice cream had sat around for a hundred years and you decide to put them on top of each other. Now you're getting all kinds of credit for inventing the Sunday. Kiss my ass. I'm sure someone had done it anyway. Number two, if not DeKalb, Illinois, how far away were we from someone inventing barbed wire? Would we have not had it by now, hundreds of years later? We would have forgot to twist wire. No, <laughs> no way. They would never twist wire. I, someone would have come up with something better. That's, they, that's what I think. I finally had to tell everyone to shut up. I was tired of hearing about barbed wire. I didn't count it as an invention. <laughs> it was a combination, not an invention. And who cares? And... Uh, People were put off. Yeah. They were not excited about this. And they're, my answer to Cindy Crawford, and Cindy Crawford was from DeKalb. It's like, well, yeah, but as soon as she turned 16, she was out of here. I mean, look. It, they actually laughed at that. Yeah, if she moved back here and, and built a ranch, that's, uh, that's something to write home about. She's gone now. All right, let's take ourselves a little break. Jesus said Alyssa sound like a dim bulb. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll be back. happening homies <laughs> i'm adam that's dr drew i'm in the hizzle for chisel schnizzle that's right phone number 1-800-LVE-191 all right let's uh hop back to the phones and uh i want to uh holla at uh some of our callers cynthia yes you're 20 yeah. what's, what's up? up um i had a question about whether um just to figure out if someone was cheating on you, I I was I was with this guy for a year, mm -hmm. and I noticed this is one thing where I had I had um, an outfit over at his house and it was like folded and I noticed one day that the un my underwear was underneath my sweatpants and the sweatpants have not been unfolded, so to me it was kind of suspicious. Like, aha! Uh -huh. I don't do not understand what you're talking about. She, Drew, she was with a guy for about a year. And then one day she left an outfit over at his house, and she noticed that the outfit was folded, but the underpants weren't. I mean, if I had a nickel for every time I heard about the underpants unfolded story when the outfit was left at the friend's house. It's, it's ironclad, right? I mean, it's, it's obvious yeah. that he's, yeah. uh, yeah. what's he doing? He's cheating. Ah. He's got to be cheating. Otherwise, the underpants would have been folded. Okay. But my assumption was, you know. Oh, hold on a second. We, we, didn't, we, don't, we don't have any idea what you just said. What you're talking about, the sweats and the underpants? What in the hell are you talking about? The clothes. Yeah. You left clothes at his house. Okay. And then... You left uh, clothes at his house. Right. Okay. And they're folded up and sitting on a dresser for a long time. In a basket. In a basket for a long time. A week. A week. Ah, and keep going. Oh man, the clothing old, in a basket. For oh, a week. clothing in a basket. They call cheating clothing in a basket <laughs> in England. They're like clothing in a basket, mate. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, bad times. Bad times. Your wife? Clothing in a basket. Oh, oh, oh. that's right. no. Yeah, clothing in a basket. And then I also noticed that when I would come over, sex wouldn't be on his mind. Kind of like I had the feeling he got it from someone else already. And I don't see him that often. Still curious about the clothing in the basket. What is that? Part. Yeah, what is going on with that? Um, well, one day we worked out, and I showered over there, and he happened to do his laundry the same day, so I put my clothes in a basket, and we did. The, he did, so I washed my clothes, and then when we got the clothes back from the laundry, I just folded it and left it in the basket. Uh. That's how it was there. 
I see. Well, now it's one thousand percent chance he's cheating. I, it's so clear now, too. Yeah, it's crystal clear. But you you should write. More. You should write. Um, you mystery should write novels. mystery novels. Yes, yes. Mystery novels, because you painted a picture in my head. I mean, I saw this dude on top of the woman. Just, True. just. I, I closed my eyes. Well, and I, I, saw I saw him, him clothing in a basket. Yeah. Well, so now, Cynthia. Yeah. I know we're going on. To, uh, we're going. We're approaching the forty-five minute mark on this call, but uh, clothing in the basket. Uh, this is the number one example you bring up as to how you know he might be cheating. So far, we've we've asked you about it six times, and I've gotten the part where you've left your clothes at his house folded in a basket. Yeah. What the hell that has to do with cheating? We cannot make any connection. Well, are you, I'm just bringing up a little, you know, something that I noticed. You noticed? Yeah, but what, it, it what did, goes on, though. What did you I notice? Noticed that. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, do we? Uh, what do we have? Do you know what? You know what I believe. You know what I believe we have calling this show. I believe we have animals that have some sort of English to animal <laughs> translator on the phone. Like this is just a raccoon. It's called the show, and there's some kind of translation thing. Right. So this would have sounded like if a dog <laughs> paw like knocked the phone off and just started barking randomly into it. This is what it would be. And 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 the the screw on part. It's a good invention, by the way. This. Dogs can call for help now. Ah. They uh, call the fire department stuff. It's just a screw-on attachment on the phone that just translates the barks into words. In English. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Go ahead, Cynthia. Okay, and... Um... All right, so this guy's got one pretty big strike against him <laughs> by letting you leave your clothes in a basket at his house. But I'm his girlfriend, so... Right. Why would that be a strike? Well, I just mean we know he's cheating because you were able to leave apparel. At his house, okay. right? So that that's one, but you know it's ninety nine percent guilty. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's next? You left a hat no. over there, or some socks? No. No. What Tennis else? shoes, sneakers. What happened? Yeah. No. So then, um, we got into an argument. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't over his house on a Monday, mm-hmm. and I checked his voicemail mm-hmm. the next day, which was Tuesday, mm-hmm. and noticed that his ex girlfriend had gotten in contact with him. Mm-hmm. So he called her. On contact. She and called him first. She got he on contact. She on co- contacted him first, and then he called her back? Right. All right. Then what? And then um, um, she leaves a message on Tuesday and says, this really isn't cool, whatever. So I was assuming, what did he do? Call her on Monday and hooked up because I wasn't there. I slept with her, but I don't know. Well, what? Like, how, you, you're it. checking his voicemail? Right. All right. Well... This doesn't, I don't know, you guys going to get married or what? No, no way. You don't have any kids with this guy, do you? No. Right. It doesn't sound like you like him that much. It's not much of a relationship. We still don't know, have any idea what the clothing in the basket had to do with this story. But Just a suspicion. Just a suspicion. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> you know, Drew, sometimes you come into a house, you'll see a hamper that's half full. That you put your clothing in? And you'll know that bitch was cheating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's call it woman's intuition. Cynthia? Yeah. I'm going to play hunch now myself. Okay. Junior college. Mm. Me? Yeah. I go to a, a university. Well, i got to pick this Hold up. on, true. <laughs> really? Yeah. You go to a university? Right. Cal State, San Jose. Which one? San Jose State. San Jose State. True. True's doing pretty good. Really? You actually attend a college? Yeah. What happened? Is your dad the dean? No, it's close to home. Are you like 100% Comanche Indian, or how'd you get in there? Oh, anyone could get into San Jose. Oh, okay. You so you actually just squatted. You just walked in and wouldn't leave the campus? I transferred from junior college. Oh, uh, okay. I smelled some yeah. junior college there. Okay. All right, Cynthia, it doesn't sound like you're in love with the guy. Yeah, it's not, not a relationship that's going well. <laughs> it, it's time to, time to wrap it up. It's funny, when we kept... Going back to her about the clothing, she then would take it to a new level by going, hey, you know, it's just a suspicion. But she never actually <laughs> never. would address the part. She never explained what the clothing was about, ever. I don't I, know. I, I, I was, was listening. Like, like, I was like a sore that I have to pick at. I must know what she's talking about. No. Really? Okay. Let's <laughs> we got time. Cynthia. Yes. One more. Okay. I'm just going to ask three good questions with the clothing. Okay. One good one. 
Why does y your clothing being left in his basket have anything have anything to do with him cheating? No, but the fact that it was the underwear the underwear was all of a sudden misplaced, like it was moved. What does moving underwear have to do with him cheating? Hiding it. Hiding your underwear? Yeah. From so that the person who's coming over to his house doesn't see your underpants. He sees right. your your clothing, but not your underpants. It's just a pair of sweatpants. You couldn't tell it was guys or girls' sweatpants. All right, and you but put underwear stands out more. Yeah, but a different color. maybe he was just sniffing it and beating off. Okay. All right. This, this guy's making you nuts, Cynthia. <clears throat> yeah. He's well, actually, no, he is. You being nuts is making you nuts. Yeah. Okay, that was uneventful. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Love line, Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All right, there, Drew Skirts. There we go. Ready to rock? Yeah. Let's rock. Hey, Jake. Yo. You ready to rock? I'm ready. Let's go, brother. Okay. All righty. Um, well, here's my issue. Um, issue? I'm 19. Uh huh. I've been dating this girl for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a little over two and a half years. Mm hmm. And, uh, I can ejaculate by myself, mm -hmm. um, and here's, uh, it's, it's, a un, it's not the normal way where, you know, uh, a guy would use his hand or whatnot. Um, I basically hump my bed or... A, We've uh, heard of this. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while. Been a while. It, it, well, yeah, and so that's how I do it, and I can... I can basically get that um, anytime, anytime I want. But your bed's you know, always, always ready to go. Always, always available. Always ready. I mean, I've always said this: your, your bed's never on its period. It's never moody. Never buried a parent. Doesn't long, want to give any oral. How long does it take you? Um, that way. To with the bed. Calculate? With the bed, yeah. Um, I can, it, yeah. It can go anywhere from you know, uh, two minutes to five minutes, I guess. Whoa, it's quite, quite a range. Quite a technique. Yeah. All right. What's the question? Well, what is? It's just on top of the bed. Uh, yeah. I mean, it. It mostly what I do is. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I didn't. Know we were nowhere getting into this, but yeah. uh, with a blanket and then just kind of form it to cause more pressure against my penis and. Not an artificial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not using the blanket. Is like, like uh, you ever you ever see them make waffle cones? <laughs> They, they no, lay no, no. and they, you know, you're not making an orifice out of the blanket. No. No. No, it's, that'd be grotesque. It's like to rub up against. Right. That. And where does the mess go? Right there. In the on, blanket. Under the blanket. That must be right. a delightful piece right. of. Right. Well, uh, it, it gets cleaned up right away, but that's where it goes. But onto the blanket. Right. I, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't sort of repel off. I got, it, I got jizz in my pubes from <laughs> high school. I know it's high school jizz. Like you don't just take a a. A comforter and shake it and snap the jizz out of it. That's right. that's there for the long haul. Right. Anderson's eating. <laughs> Anderson just ate a big jizz ball. I saw him. Gross, dude. Okay. Reminds you, you ever see the cat? The cat returns. Yeah. Shake the sheets to get the pink. Snaps it right out. Mm. All right. So well, that was on the wall, though. Then. That's your technique. Okay. Well, yeah. And see, there is importance to this now because that's how I can do it. And my girlfriend. Cannot cause me to um, have an orgasm. Oh, okay, we yeah. have not had sex. We're still both virgins. Right. Mm. And uh, it, it, my question leads to sex: is if if we continue or if we have sex, will this problem change? So to, with oral sex, there's no orgasm. There's no orgasm. You'll be fine. Oral sex yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Man of passion. Man of passion. Hey, this is the danger of coming up with a very bizarre yet specific technique <laughs> for an orgasm. Because your penis becomes uh, conditioned to it, dependent on it. Yeah, this yeah. is, it, it's like, is if, if you if you get some young prospect, some boxer, you can't just have him throw right hands all day long. He's got to use his left hand. He's got to switch his stance up. You got to have him throw everything and yeah. sort of mix it up. Otherwise, you just get locked into this one pattern, and then, then there's trouble when you get in the ring. And if you got one of those weird beat-off things, you get into the ring, 
and there's going to be trouble because there's no way you're going to ever really simulate that with a woman. Well, maybe your creation of the artificial orifice is, should be a guy's technique of choice. I just think a guy's got to move it. He's got to move it you around. You see what I'm saying? You got made fun of him for making an artificial orifice. Maybe that's the way to no. get close to the real thing. No, what you got to do is you got to beat off on your back one day, uh, and the next day you got to beat off in the shower. Right. And the next day you got to beat off squatting over one of your sleeping parents. <laughs> I mean, you got to you got to mix it up. And so, basically, to follow your logic, the rangier and the more extreme the circumstances and the positions, the better off you're going to be. Well, yeah. it, is, it is because you'll be able to hump standing up on a rooftop with the old lady bent over the parapet, mm -hmm. or you'll be able to do it in a pup tent when you're just sort of on her, grinding away. You, you know what I mean? You get used to that one position, you're no good in any other position. Again, I think that's the sort of... Um, you can move it around. The, the troubled penis. You know what I mean? Some, some peni are trouble, troublesome. No, but I've tra I've trained myself. I, <laughs> I'm trained. I can beat off at any position now. I I I only use it for beating. I understand, off. but you have a troublesome penis. So some guys, it's, it's like, are, are, uh -oh. what's that? That's yeah. Uh, she's on the road. Uh, you know what I do now? My mom can't stand. Uh, my, my mom doesn't like me talking on the cell phone when I'm driving. Why? How does she know? She thinks it's dangerous. Uh -huh. As you know, I tell her, and it gets me off the phone. Uh, uh, uh. It's great. It's always like, uh, you know, she's like, um, I'll be talking to my mom. She'll, she'll, she'll be talking talking about something I don't want to talk, you know. Uh, Pat Bruno, uh, Mom, I'm driving the car. Oh, oh, oh. You know, old people think it's a weird, they think it's it, it's deviltry, you know. Yeah. like, Yeah, Mom, driving the car. Oh, 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 okay, honey. Well, they, no, no, don't talk. Oh, I mean. And by well, the way, road? the people that tell you to pull over, are they high? Like, uh, I'm just going to just pull into the gutter here off the, the uh, 110 and uh, wait to either get broadsided by a drunk or carjacked. Like, that, yeah, you just get on the cell phone and who, just... Who told you to pull over? They have it, like, in commercials oh, and I stuff. See. Like, yeah. if you only never use a cell phone, well, always pull over if you're uh -huh. talking on that. Like, what, what, what does that mean, pull over? What... Well, by the way, what good's the cell phone if I'm pulling over? Number one and number two, where am I pulling over again? And, and let me let me let me even throw. Don't another, you get killed when you pull over? But let me throw another sort of question to this: is you're you're already on the cell phone? That's why you're trying to pull over. So it's less dangerous than just driving straight to pull a, pull across traffic into the gutter. I, I'm I'm gonna make it over four lanes and then park the car on the side of the ten <laughs> while. Uh, Truckers are hopped up on speed, go flying past me at seventy while I sit here and talk on the phone. But anyway, I just tell my mom I'm talking on the I'm on the freeway, and she uh, immediately wants to get off the phone. It's it's a good it's a good one. You guys, you, Drew, you want to use this? Yeah, oh yeah, use uh, this one. A mental note, don't worry. Yeah, I actually need to get uh, one of those sound effect records. So even when I'm at home, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm at home. All right, so who are we talking to? We're switching. Oh, Stephanie is we we're trying to talk to. Yeah. Where is she? Three. Oh, line three. There it is. Stephanie? Yeah? Pull over, baby. Oh, no way. I just told you, like, heard your whole speech on not pulling over, so no way. Let's pull over and shut your lights and make sure half your car's in the slow lane. <laughs> no way. And then, I'm on the 405. There's no way yeah, I'm pulling over and getting open the your, Open the door closest to traffic and sit in your car and safely <laughs> speak on the cell phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So what's up, baby doll? Um. Well, um, I've been on birth control probably since I was about 16. Mm -hmm. Good times. And about nine months ago, I um, decided to switch over to the Depo Provera, the shot. Yeah. And I've just noticed that um, probably I would say the first week of the shot, I just have, like, terrible mood swings. And I know my boyfriend must, like, hate me um, for that first week. Is there... They told me to take calcium when I'm on this shot. Halcyon? Calcium. Calcium. Like uh -huh. vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other, like, vitamin or anything that I can take just to kind of curb the side effects for that, like, first week, week and a half? Just tell her to take some sugar pill. Yeah. That'll work on her mind. <laughs> Nothing that I have faith will work. In the past, vitamin D, B6, vitamin C, these things have all been implicated as useful. I, I don't think anything really works. The fact is that Depro can affect the mood. And it does so rather prominently in some women, and you have to be very, very careful with that. Okay. All right, so maybe it's this like, is like the a one bad, for her. It's like a bad PMS, but it only lasts for a week, and then the next eight weeks she's fine. That's a, or that's 11 a long weeks. week. 11 weeks she's fine.
It's a lot with the crazy old lady. Uh, it'd be interesting. Let's ask if she had bad PMS before. All right. Stephanie. Yeah. Before you started taking birth control, did you have real bad PMS? Oh, um, well, not really. I mean, I was 15, so I don't really remember, but uh, it wasn't terrible at all. How about on the pills? On the pill, I was totally fine, like, yeah. you know. Um, maybe, it's, but, maybe you should go back to the pills since they were better for you. Well, the only thing that I like about the Depo Vero shot is that I don't have a period. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can take your pills continuously, you know, without cycling them. And oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you do... do Gynecologists not like that. We, it's just a new. It's a new notion, and there are many gynecologists that that believe that's how we should be using the birth control pill. There's no reason to have a period. Yeah, well, and, good times. Uh, some are uncomfortable with that. Kelsey. Hello. Yep, you're 15. Yeah. Hold on, let me talk to Drew about something. Drew, I yeah. don't know why I was listening to the radio and they were talking about it today. Well, what do you think of uh, organs and parts and donors and that kind of stuff? I think about selling parts. Selling parts? Yeah. I think about that. Well, it's just that people ha believe there's an ethical problem when you create a market for organs. Yeah. That That's one thing. What about the problem of having people who are otherwise healthy dying because yeah. they can't get a liver or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think everyone would change their tune if they had a kid who needed a part. Yeah. And they were on some kind of waiting list that was never going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah, you think. There's already a bunch of money made by the people that do the operations and retrieve the organs and yep. do all that. So that's a business. There's a business, yeah. Why not just the business of, look, uh, if I get cleaned out on a moped accident, uh, I'm going to sell my parts and you can give me a few bucks up front. Mm -hmm. Why isn't everyone donor? Do you have a donor thing on mm -hmm. your license? Why yeah. doesn't everyone do that? Weirdos. Yeah. They think, oh... Someone's going to get my corneas, and well, then I'm going to see the world through their eyes or some nonsense that, like that. There's people who have a weird thing about dead bodies. A. Right. B, uh, it's the man's going to take me apart before I'm ready. <laughs> I'm yeah. not really going to yeah. be dead? Right. Yeah, they're going to try to harvest me? Right. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't you think we ought to just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and do that? Make it mandatory? Well, here's, here's, or, what, or I'm, here, here, here's what I'm talking about. Uh I'd like to see, uh, by the way, everyone is listening to this show, I'd like to see them get one of those little donor stickers uh, on their on their license. So if something happens, you know, we got a lot, of, yeah. we got a lot of young listeners. A lot of them are dumb. A lot of them like they uh, do a lot of miles on uh, motorcycles drunk with no helmets and stuff like that. Uh -huh. You guys are prime. We'd probably leave the brain, but we could harvest you. And we, we'd strip you like a stolen Honda. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Got a lot of good parts in you. It would it would be a, a nice thing to do, and everyone should do it. And I don't know what percentage of people do it. It's the kind of thing I wouldn't mind hearing a couple of PSAs for. Yeah. Hearing a few too many. Uh, heard a little too much about secondhand smoke in the last five years, and not one thing that said, uh, hey, folks, there's thousands of people are dying every year because they can't get their hold of a liver or pancreas or something. And we could just go ahead and we're burying plenty good parts. We play at least one of them every night on the we show. We do? Yeah. We do? Which one is it? I don't know. But I know we play it. I hear it all the time. How come we've never heard it? Because we try not to hear them. I'm sure we've all heard it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll find, find, find it. it. Yeah, yeah I want to hear the uh, donate your organ thing. I'd be glad to hear that. Yeah. But uh, anyway, you know, it, it gets into that uh, slippery slope stuff where they go, uh, now you're playing God. You're playing God. It's the same. Uh, Only attorneys make that same, argument. I know, but I, that retarded slippery slope argument that the uh, NRA makes, that they make when they're trying to get uh, Kevork in. You know, the NRA does this where they go, hey, uh, today it's uh, AK-47s with 40-round uh, uh, banana cartridges, uh, clips, and uh, armor-piercing bullets. Tomorrow, <laughs> it's sporks. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. Yeah, sure, today we give up the ak 47 but tomorrow, Where's it gonna stop? tomorrow some uh, jack-booted thug from the government shows up. He wants, he wants my kid's pallet gun. Uh-huh, that's how it works, you see? I always love that slippery slope thing, and yeah. I love it when they do it with, like, Kevorkian. Like, uh, yeah, sure, today the guy's cure killing a guy's bottle body is uh, riddled with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, and he's scared he's going to choke on his own saliva in his sleep and uh, freak his wife out. Yeah, that's today, but uh, we make this legal. What's to stop a doc? You bring your 13-year-old for a physical, wants to play a little Pop Warner football? Doctor takes a pillow and puts it right over his head, <laughs> snuffs him out. Not a damn thing we can do. That's legal now. It's legal. You see what I'm saying? You see where this is heading? 
<laughs> What's to stop physicians from killing perfectly healthy children? Yeah, we let we let this seventy year old uh, Kevorkian out of prison. This could happen. This is where we're going. Slippery oh, slope, Drew. So crazy. Yeah, I mean, here's what I here's what I always think whenever I see those guys talking because they because, you know, like Michigan already spent ten million dollars trying to put Kevorkian in prison. You know, here's what I think. How come people interview them just sort of nod their heads? Like, yeah. th doesn't anyone oh, scream? I, listen, like, are you high? Listen, are you high? I think that about most television interviews. How come no one in a television interview just says, are you high? You know like, why? Because journalists are taught not to, you know, first of all, they're expert in nothing. But they're journalists. Aren't they supposed to ask some tough questions? Mm -hmm. Like, really? Like, uh, we stopped Kevorkian from killing some 80-year-old guys on death's doorstep, and uh, this means we can kill healthy patients now, and there's nothing you can do about it? Do you really believe that? Do you think this is going to be a growing trend in the medical profession now? Just uh, doctors snuffing people out? I don't know. Hey, slippery slope, Drew. See, we don't know. You're playing God. Yeah, Anderson's got it. Jason died in a car accident oh, yeah, on this. April 3rd, 95. Yeah, I remember this, but I not every right night. Away about donating his organs. I he said heard this to in me, five years. Mom, if anything ever happened to me, you should donate all my organs. Share your decision to become an organ and tissue donor with your family today. I feel very happy that he decided this. Organ and tissue donation. Share your life. Share your decision. Call 1-800-355-SHARE. I know. Uh, that mental note, don't it. use real people for PSAs. <laughs> that was, five years? I know she's grieving, but that was a bad read. <laughs> oh. I would have given that again. Uh, I would have been like, uh, I would have been in the studio like, uh, listen, uh, we know you lost your son tragically to a drunk driver, and you want to donate insurance, but I want you to have fun with it this time. <laughs> Let's do three. Do three. Have fun with it. Give me big. Give me, give me medium. Big and extra grande. All right? Uh, and Vente. And Vente. and action. And action. Yeah. Uh, now I, I don't remember hearing I haven't heard that one in a while, yeah. but it is I have heard it. All right, you ready to go here? Tom? Yeah, we go. Wait a minute, where were we? No, no, I want to do this one. You wanna to talk to Joseph? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Joseph. Joseph? Yeah. You're twenty three? That's right. What's That's, up? What's going on? Uh recently uh actually not recently, today I I got surgery on my penis. Mm -hmm. Lengthening. Lengthening? Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, what was the length before? Uh, fully erected was close to eight inches. It was yeah. close to eight. Yes. Right. Yeah. right. And um, the cops are coming because you killed your girlfriend with it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course not. What do you have? A police scanner in the background? No, negative. It's our radio show. Yeah. Um, Turn that off, okay? Go for it. And um, I want to know how long would the pain last in my abdominal area? And my second question is... No, no, no. It's not his question. Oh, look. You had penis surgery today? Yes. Yeah, you're surprised that there's pain in your I mean, abdominal area? It's not pain. Just when I walk it, it yeah. I feel the blood flow going yeah. down. Listen, first off, you're calling from Van Nuys. Correct. Yeah. Guy, people from Van Nuys can't afford to get uh, a pair of retreads for their Vega. They don't have extra dork money. <sighs> you live in a crappy apartment. You're driving a beat-up car. Where'd you get the money for the for the operation? Saved up. No, you didn't. Yeah. Bogus. Half on the credit card, a half on cash. What do you do for a living? I'm um, in a customer service for Delphia. How much? How much did the operation cost? A thousand. Who did it? No, it did not cost a thousand dollars for yeah. penis lengthening. Yes. You're high. No. Who did it? What kind, uh, what kind of doctor? Excuse me. What kind of doctor did it? Uh, I don't remember the ad. It was for a thousand dollars. Where? And the city in Bell Gardens. And what was the doctor's name? Fred. I don't remember his last name. <laughs> Dr. Fred? What kind of doctor was he? Uh, surgical. Surgeon. What kind of surgeon? For uh, male, male surgery. He was a male surgeon. So it was a thousand even. He was out in Bell Gardens. His name is Fred. <laughs> Fred Sadoon, I don't remember. Uh-huh. And uh, he just paid him a thousand. Right. And what was the procedure that he did? Well, obviously, uh, he cleaned me up, and um, it took like an hour. The hour It took one hour at the procedure. What kind of and anesthesia they use? Excuse me? What kind of anesthesia they use? Local. And what, what was the procedure they did? Uh, they cut my, my uh, I believe, the do lower pubic bone. They incisioned, and then they cut the ligament. Oh, they just did the ligament. So, Correct. Yeah. Dr. Fred did this? Yes. And uh, how much length did you get out of it? Um, 
right now it's a little bit swollen. It's like between two to three inches more. So you, you, you might be able to get up to like 11 inches? Mm, I, maybe. Maybe. All right. And Dr. Fred didn't tell you how long you were going to have pain for? Well, he told me roughly um, a week. Yeah, all right. it's, it's going to be about a week. Yeah. That makes sense. And um, he <laughs> prescribed Keflex. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between Keflex? Keflex and amoxicillin. They're they're both antibiotics. They're both one's a cephalosporin, and one's a penicillin. They have a different spectrum of bacterial coverage. A thousand, you need, you need to take thousand the bucks sounds reasonable. It sounds like a lot. Just a snip of tendon. Like what? A, well, nothing. A thousand dollars sounds pretty cheap for any cosmetic surgery. I mean, come on. Well, it's, it's what? It's not believable or what? Well, it, it was we, believable, we, we except for around. you just said it. We you, come except for him just saying it's not believable. Yeah. No. Thousand even? Yes. You saw the ad in, like, the L.A. Weekly? Uh, I believe it's L.A. Times. All right. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, and they uh, said that when they put the stitches on, that the stitches will come off automatically. Yeah. All right, buddy. All right, good times. You have a, you have a lady friend? Yes. Isn't there better yeah. stuff to do with your money than... A eh, thousand bucks. What are you going to do with a thousand bucks these days? Yeah, well, I remember when, before I did the surgery, there, it was around like 1500 Yeah. What did you do, chew the guy down? No. He was, no, watch, no, he was no, watching no. the prices. I just waited. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's right. That's why you always get always get the penis surgery uh, toward the middle of the year when the 2004s hit the showroom wow. floor. He was just waiting around. I love that was say chew down, by the way. <laughs> always funny. Yeah. Yeah, this lady's going to be in for a nice treat. Oh, nice. As if she gives a rat's ass about that. Like him, like he's eight inches already. Like she, like that's all she needs. Yeah. She needs that. Like she needs her ass to grow. You know, <laughs> she needs. She needs Mr. Eight to get up to ten. <laughs> oh God. Except for now, he's fixated on his penis. Oh. He has a weird Frankenstein bolt hanging out of the side of it. <laughs> Whoa. His name is Doctor Ed. Fred. He's out in Doctor Freddy's in Bell Gardens. Ten dollars. He gave he threw in a ball tuck too for free. One sack I'm You ought to look at that. <laughs> All right, well good times, Drew. All right. We'll uh take ourselves a break. We'll be right back. Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. You ready to rock here, Drew mm -hmm. Kelsey? Yeah. You're 15? Yep. What's up, baby doll? Um, okay, I was calling in because basically, like, I just kind of run my own life and I do whatever I want and, like, I just kind of every weekend go out and party as hard as I can and, like, yeah. I just... I end up getting with like lots and lots of guys. Like I have an intense list of guys, but I like I never get attached. Like I never like freak out about it. I'm always just really chill about that kind of thing. And like you chill about your list. Yeah. All right. Do you have a list? Yeah, but it's just like yeah. Get rid of that list. Why? Because there's a guy who's not on it yet who yeah. will be on it. Who'll we'll find it one day. Who'll be freaked out about and it. And be freaked out. Yeah, no, but I don't care if they freak out about it. Like, that'd be okay. Like, I'd be like, yeah, that's my past, dude. Get over it. All right. All right. So, what's what you, wrong you, with you? Yeah. Something's no, wrong well, with you. No, well, I just wonder, like, because, like, my friends and I, like, I feel like kind of like there's something, like, we shouldn't be doing exactly what I'm doing. Are you having sex with these guys? Just, like, like I've had sex, like, recently for the first time. Yeah. So, what are you doing with these guys? Like, I, I don't go that far as a thing. It's just, like, they're always older and stuff, and, like... How old are they? Like, seniors, usually. Woo-wee! Uh, okay, well, look, stop it if you don't want to do you, it. Are you always loaded when you do it? Yeah. Yeah, I just think this is all part of alcoholism going on here. Okay. And, uh, you know, you'll see. It's, it's, it'll, this will progress and uh, get more out of control, and the behaviors will be more disturbing for you as you go along. And hopefully someday you'll be willing to do something about this. Well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do when you're growing up? Well, I'm really, like, like the thing is, like, I'm really smart and I get really good grades, too. Right. Mm hmm And, like, I know that'll start, <clears throat> like, not happening as much if I keep doing it. Right. Are you yeah. doing ecstasy when you go out? 
Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't do anything hard. Just, I, just booze and, booze and alcohol, booze yeah. and pot. Well, many of this world's, great, this country's greatest leaders and the greatest alcoholics. creators are alcoholics. Right, is your dad an alcoholic? No, it's not in our family at all. I'm kind of like the crazy one. Well, wait a minute. Really likes me and stuff. What, <laughs> what's your ethnicity? Um, I'm white. Aha! Uh -huh. Where are your ancestors from? Um, Portugal and like Britain. Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, look on the Scottish side <laughs> there. Okay, hey uh, Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, you get good grades. Mhm. Mm and um and uh. You're going to go to college? Uh, yeah, for sure. All right. And what do you want to do after um, that? Not really sure yet. I'm only a freshman, so okay. I haven't really thought of it. All right. What do you like to do besides booze and uh, give guys handies? <laughs> <laughs> and not that there's not a place for that in society. I mean, you can make a living doing that. Believe you me. <laughs> Drop yeah, down I'm with that. It's just like, because I can get, like, it's kind of like a challenge, kind of, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, I I like going for the hardest, and I always get it. Right. Well, you, yeah. you understand that you feel validated by this, but uh, but but by the way, fifteen-year-old drunken sophomores, it's like I like going for the hardest guy, but I always get him. It's like, yeah, you get uh, any guy. Monica Lewinsky yeah, has, got a, the president. has a fat ass and no brain, and she's blowing the president. Right. That that says everything there's so you need to know about a male, right there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. imagine. Um, imagine the version, like, Clinton is, you know, the youngest president since Kennedy. He's uh, considered attractive uh, on the ball and hip and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here he is. I mean, Monica, Monica Lewinsky did uh, Jimmy's show a couple weeks ago. She's a pain in the ass. She's uh, essentially brainless, and she's got an ass the size of Montana. And at the time, she was, like, at 18 and a half or 19. Imagine, um, um, imagine some female president who's basically uh, Michelle Pfeiffer or something at age uh, 39. I mean, whatever the uh, you see, it's not fair because you know Clinton's 44 and yeah. women at 44. Society doesn't deem them as attractive, but right. a guy at 44 is, and the president is pre pretty much the uh, one of the better catches yeah. in the country. You know what I mean? I mean. If you're going to do the female equivalent to Clinton, you have to say this is Angelina Jolie or something. Yeah, yeah. She's basically uh, going at it with some goofball, half-tard, fat-ass, 18-year-old intern who's getting his coffee. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, does that exist? No. So listen, your challenge and magically the reason why you always come out the victor when you're uh, challenged to get these guys to uh, give the handy to and uh, no, no, which doesn't understand is no challenge. There's, there's no challenge. There's no challenge. No. You, you want to hook up with a high school guy when you're a high school chick? No challenge. Show up yeah. and present. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Kelsey's uh, got to take it easy. You yeah, know what she will, said? This yeah. will uh, come around for her someday in not a good way. You know what I don't like? I always resent because uh, I was such a horrible student. She said she was smart. She got yeah. good grades. People always do that in high school. They go, oh, he's smart. Yeah, yeah. this guy gets A's yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, do the math to yeah. the guy who was uh, the ceramics major who was getting the D minuses and the fails. Smart A's. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's all you got to go off of in high school. Then you get out and you find out that people aren't so smart. Dennis. Yeah. You're 20. Yep. What's up? Well, uh, when me and my girlfriend have sex, and she'll have an orgasm, it's uh, more like she's on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know it's, I know that's what it is. Have you heard of that before? Yes. Um, is there anything I can do, like get, get stop that or no? Uh, uh, Ranko. What's no, that? No. Slicker. Nothing you can do. Well, it no. may not be urine. It may be female ejaculation. Right. But, but you in either case, you don't like it. He thinks it's urine, right? It, it is. I know it is. How do you know it is? Smelled it? Well, I've, I've been down there. I've given her oral sex, and she did it, and you know, I've tasted it. Ooh. Good that's time. a man. How do you know what urine tastes like? Oh, uh, true, you know. <laughs> Please. I don't know. It's just what it is, man. All right. All right. Well, if that's yeah. what it is, that's what it is. I mean, is, there's nothing you can do to... No. What, she grow out of it? No. Where did uh, Where does it... If you're performing oral and you get hit by, where does it get you? Uh, everywhere. She's like... <laughs> Her nickname is Waterfalls. Because when she starts, she don't stop. 
Right. And what does she think it is? She thinks she's actually coming. I mean... Well, she's yeah. having an orgasm. It's just when she does that, she loses her bladder control. Okay, so that's... that's I, I'm still unconvinced that it's urine. Why isn't it urine? Why could it not be something else? I, well, I take a cup of urine and hit you in the face with it. You'll know what it yeah, is. Yeah, but she has no... I mean, does she evacuate her bladder before you guys get together? Um, I've never asked her that. All right, why don't you make sure there's nothing in her bladder at the time when you're doing this, and maybe it won't happen, or... If it does, perhaps it's not urine after all. True. Yeah. And every other and every team some asparagus the night before and see, you know, see Amen. if that's what you get. Amen, brother. You know what I'm saying? True knows from the other side of the bathroom stall when I've been eating asparagus. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's savory. Yeah. But here's the thing, Drew. You sit around here all night, somebody says uh, the woman had an orgasm No, and, it might be uh, pee. It might be. Yeah, and and she had ejaculate come out, and you always argue might be pee, might be pee, might be pee. Now you got a guy saying it's pee, and you're like, well, it might be ejaculate, no, it might because, be ejaculate. No, because I know how women react to that, and they they immediately jump to the pee thing, and they take all kinds of precautions not to pee. And this was his girlfriend saying, no, no, not no, pee. But not but pee. if you have female orgasmic incontinence, you have it. Yeah, it doesn't right. matter if you clear your yeah, bladder. Right. Oh, uh, it helps, but yeah. it's still, you're still gonna get some. Yeah, some. Yeah. All right, this guy's getting a nice blast in the face. And Drew, you know, whenever Drew talks to women, he's always like, please, guys love that. Guys love it. Guys, it's like, guys like a little dookie mustache, too. Oh, they love that. They love it. And I always say, uh, they might like it the first time, but it's going to get old pretty quick. Someone whizzing. And I think it's some guys are, are pussies. Drew, Drew's a man of such extreme passion. He can't understand why this would be a little disconcerting to a guy in a long-term relationship. Like, if I knew every time I was going to have sex, I was getting going to get blasted with urine, I'd be like, uh, yeah, hon, uh, I'm just going to beat this one off. You would you, invent. Uh, you go ahead. You would invent some sort of device, some sort of shield. Uh, whatever. Right? Yeah, like. You'd accommodate. I, I would work around it, uh, possibly, but I would not be excited about it, mm. and I wouldn't be dismissive about it. Like, ah, come on, buddy, just hit the, come on, get in there. I mean, no, the guy's getting hit with urine. Mm. What do you want him to do? I, I would have questions. Yeah, 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 questions. I'd be down there with a welding mask. Mm. With a tongue uh, hole. Paris? No, I, you know, I was thinking about that. No tongue hole. You know uh, when guys handle, like, uh, uranium and yeah. stuff, they have those gloves yeah, they yeah. just stick through, like sure. those boxes where they do sandblasting from? Tongue. I'd have that for my tongue. <laughs> Dang, uh, uh, I'd be working my tongue with a joystick <laughs> behind a blast shield. Oh. I'd have a, uh, I, oh. I'd do it like the bomb squad. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'd have my robot with a camera right. in it. I'd it, be, uh, be maneuvering the robot up, up the with my room. joystick yeah. to perform oral. Mm-hmm. Still inexplicably have the shotgun that's mounted on the uh, bomb squad robot, just in case. Just in case things got out of hand. Paris? Hello? You're 15? Yeah. Um, What's up? Hi. Um, my boyfriend has, um, we've been going out for two years, and he's always been a big fan of Kurt Cobain and stuff. Mm -hmm. He's been, like, obsessive. Mm -hmm. But now he's become really um, depressed, and he started using heroin because Kurt Cobain did. How old's oh. your boyfriend? 15. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Well, what was your boyfriend, uh... This is going to be scary, Drew, but what, what was he, seven when Kurt Cobain uh, killed himself? He was like three. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but he's always just, he looks just like him. He's always has, like, pictures. Yeah, seven, right. He's like, yeah, he's like seven, six. Right. Yeah. He's just always liked him, and I read in his journal how, this is quote-unquote, how cool would it be if he killed himself the same day Kurt Cobain did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm well, scared. I don't know what All right. Do. He's 15 as a heroin addict, all right? Yeah. His probability of living to 25 is pretty slim. Really? So, yeah. So you need to get, unless he gets some help as quickly as possible, this well, is a very serious situation. Okay. When did he kill himself? Like March 94? Um, April? Well, he talks about him all the time, so I know it's like April something. April? Yeah. Close. Something yeah. Like that. April 94. Yep. No? Yeah. I remember it well because I was trying. That's that's when I was trying to train Jimmy to box. Wow. Hmm. And uh, the, the station was flooded with calls and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was mad at Kurt Cobain. I couldn't, you know, couldn't get in there. Huh. All right. Hey. Uh, so uh, anyway, that was uh, well, let's just say uh, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Nine years ago. Mm -hmm. So your <laughs> your boyfriend was six. 
just has always liked him. I don't know. Ever since I've met him, I've known him since like the fifth grade. He's always right. been talking about him all the time. All right, well, your boyfriend's depressed. That's all. He was a heroin addict. Oh, a heroin addict. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that is happen. that is. Uh, you couldn't have a more serious illness I mean, at 15. We were making out, and he actually called me Courtney. Yeah, well, <laughs> he also has some real serious psychiatric problems, uh, but, this but none be, of that can be dealt with till. I don't know. Could she, be bogus. She bogus. Yeah. Paris, we don't believe you now. What? No, yeah. he seriously did. We were making out when he said Courtney or something like that. And I was like, um, okay. All right. All right. Had blonde hair. I don't know, maybe. All right. Okay, well, he's at least he didn't call you Dave Girl. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good times. Mm. I don't know. Uh, look, this is too much. Just break up with the guy. No, you got you got to alert some people, some adults, what's going on here with him. This is this is very serious. Yeah, yeah. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one. We don't need that phone number. You ready to roll here, Drew? Uh, yeah. Brandon. Yeah. You're 24? Yeah, 24. What up? What's up, man? Yeah. How you doing, Adam? Good, man. Hey, listen, uh, this question is for Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Drew. Yeah? Um, uh, I had a question <laughs> right. as far That's as bogus. Uh, yeah. ejaculating into a uh, girl's anus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can... They get pregnant from that? Yes, they can. They can. Haven't you heard of an ass baby? No. You never? No. Well. An ass baby? <laughs> Come on. I'm serious. Have you seen Carrot Top? <laughs> oh, come the the on. comedian? Ass baby. No. It's true. Anderson's a. Oh, no? No. I just thought Anderson was. I don't know why. I, I think Lycus told me that or something. <laughs> But anyway, Drew. they're out. Yeah, Drew, what about it? Ass babies? <laughs> yeah, Drew, this is a serious question, man. Yeah, it's serious, and yet when Adam gives you <laughs> a, an answer you don't like. He's calling for Bakersfield, yeah, everybody. A, He's the mayor, by the way. He must be. Brandon's the mayor of Bakersfield. <laughs> Brandon? <laughs> Chief of police. Chief of police, me. librarian. What do you do over there at Bakersfield? District attorney. I'm, I'm a plumber. All right. Now, let me ask you this, Brandon. That's a smart move, that plumber. What's the smart move? Yeah, plumbers Plumbers have decided that there's a couple of professions I'm interested in in the trades. Like, I was just yelling at a friend of mine. Like, like if you wanted to be, a, like, a home builder, let's just say you were just a master carpenter. Yeah. You'd, you'd framed houses. You'd, you could do cabinets, hang doors, finish doors. It, lay out a stairway with the treads and the risers and do all the math and do all that mm -hmm. stuff. Just a real good carpenter, you, you might get 20 bucks, 22 bucks an hour, something like that. Uh, plumbers need to make like 60 bucks an hour. And yet, you could learn to be a plumber if you were an apprentice with a plumber. You could learn to be one in about uh, about a year. No problem. Whereas, whereas a carpenter would take like 10 or 15 years is to learn some, all that stuff. Is there stuff. some investment? Do they have to have product with them or something? It's somebody made the joke that plumbers were expensive. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there, there was this joke like years ago. It'd be like, you know, oh, my attorney, my doctor, <laughs> but not my plumbers more. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And the plumbers kind of ran with it. And everyone's just like, yeah, plumbers are expensive. What are you going to do? And it's diabolical because they really don't know. You know, 90% of the crap they do is just pretty, you know, sweating copper pipes together and, you know, doing that. Uh, Putting uh, putting putting uh, angle stops on or something—it's really something you could a monkey could do. I don't know why they get paid so much, but we all figured out that they—you know what it is? Because if something f's up, it'll ruin your house. Oh, really? It's a risk. I think that's what it is. Risk Brandon, yeah. Why do plumbers get paid so much? Well, because life would suck if we wasn't around. All right, buddy. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> Whoa. He should come out with bumper stickers. A this PSA. <laughs> uh, life would suck if we wasn't around. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Mo, just can't, just think about that for a minute. Hey guys. Yeah. You're awesome. Hey, Mo. Thanks, Mo. Uh, um. You're well, I was on my uh, motorcycle. You're 14, baby doll. Yeah. I mean, uh, sir doll, sir baby doll. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I was on my motorcycle about 
three days ago. Yeah. And um, I went off a jump, mm -hmm. and uh, I landed it wrong. Like, my front tire uh, hit the ground first. Mm -hmm. So I was forced forward, and my private port, like, I, like smashed into the... Um, uh, Gas tank? Handlebar. Oh, uh, nice. And, um, like, I was in excruciating pain. And so I got off my bike and, like, I checked them out and, like, they're, like, very swollen and, like, blue. Uh-oh. So I waited a day to, like, because I thought it would, like, go away because it just bruised. And, um, I whacked off. But, like, nothing would come out. And it was just, like, excruciating. And so I waited another day. And, like, they were exactly the same. Uh. Like, I don't really like to go to a doctor because, like... Yeah. You need to 14. go. No, you need to go. And he beat off and his gas cap came out. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, just about. Yeah, that's right. No, you, you need to go, Mo. <laughs> Thank you. you. You gotta get this checked out. Yeah. There's a lot of things that can be going wrong here, including losing your testes, so... Yeah. Yeah. Hey, buddy. You gotta get down to the doctor. Yeah. He's not gonna laugh. It's not like they've never seen a smashed test. He's not before. into, like, the whole, like... Touchy feely. No, Mo, you're gonna get. They'll do an ultrasound. Is what they'll do. They'll take a picture of with the sound waves and make sure they're not they're not actually fractured or dead. You got some hot Swedish nurse. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to him that way. Talk him into it. Yeah. How many hot Swedish nurses have you come across in your uh, 25 years of being a doctor, Drew? Well, it's at least half. Half. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Chicks like guy named Inga in those candy striper outfits. <laughs> Sweet. Chris. Yeah. What's up? What's up? You're 19. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, me and my girlfriend, when we first started going out, mm -hmm. she'd be really spontaneous, what? like, give me oral sex on the highway and... Sure. Um, like in her living room where her mom would be sitting, but she wouldn't notice. Hang on a second, Chris. All right. Uh, it was the guy with the, the head. This yeah. Took the head off the, uh... Oh, Drew was, yeah. Drew was trying to figure out our weirdest call of the last, uh six months and it was a guy who pulled the head off a corpse uh, that yeah. was in a mausoleum point the pivotal point that you decided i got, i want me a head uh, a was, human head i was thinking of like a decoration um for an aquarium mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i liked your response oh okay mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah uh -huh. i make a good cop yeah hey chris yeah your uh, your girlfriend used to be more spontaneous sexually. You What's happening now? Get the road BJ. Hold on, I like the part where she gave you the BJ in the living room where her mom was uh, watching TV. Yeah. How does that speaks... work? How does that work? Um, her mom was just fixed on the TV, and the computer was in there. I was on the internet, and she just really didn't notice because I was sitting down. E. I, I know she didn't... She went under the, she under the see, desk, like... My mom was like... Ma, mom just watching TV, huh? Yeah, and she didn't even notice. I mean, the whole family was there. Oh. In, you're in the same room? All right. Oh, yeah. Well, let's keep going. What, what's the question, though? <laughs> it just sounds like... It's, it's, it sounds like her family's, like... Crazy, like, yeah. Like, like inbreds. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're just, like, retarded people just mm. staring at the TV. Yeah. And by the way, uh, I know for a lot of guys, this is a rush, like... Hey, look at Dad over there cleaning his shotgun while his underage daughter blows me. This is a rush, man. This is adrenaline rush. But really, I, I, I think I find that to be distracting. More than what? distracting, <laughs> horrifying. Yeah, Chris, yeah, it was a little distracting. Yeah. Okay, so she's not doing that anymore. Oh no, she kind of. It's like she gets turned off anymore when I try to do anything like that. Like. Yeah. How long have you two been together? Uh, two years. Oh, God, this is what happens. Huh? She was, she was, uh... You stopped getting the road head. You yeah. stopped getting the, you stopped getting blown uh, underneath the Thanksgiving table uh, with the even entire family out there. In the, out in the middle of the road and stuff like that. Right, 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 Chris. Chris, don't I have any kids? No, not yet. That's, uh. that's good. And what, what you doing? Something with a forklift? Huh? Something with a forklift? No. Junior college. What do you do? Huh? What do you do for a living? Uh, just security. 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 Yeah. All right. You guard forklifts? No. Okay. Okay, listen, you guys have been at it for two years. It, this is all right. She, you have sex with her frequently? Oh, yeah. How okay. often? How often? About every other night. All right. All right. That's, that's uh, fine. Relax. Yeah. yeah. You're not doing it on top of her parents in the living room. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, my God. You know what I was like? You know my favorite part about this show is like you go... You, you get the guy, and the, the guy calls up, and he's like, uh, 
Yeah, uh, I used to get Roadhead, and then I used to get like a BJ, like in front of her grandma, like in the <laughs> same room. And you go, uh, and and she's not doing this anymore. And you go, well, you guys been together for how long? Two years. All right, been together for two years. So, you know, the bloom may be off the rose. She's not as spontaneous anymore, but she still loves you. You're having sex. So that's just settled into its natural rhythm. And they go, yeah, but this other time she blew me in the yeah. middle of the road. Right. It's like they have to keep going yeah. back to what they said. Like, yeah, we, we get it. Yes, this is how it was. And by the way, this is one of those cornerstones of being stupid, right? Like, you know, like when we tell people, well, she's seen your best friend. She told you to F off. You're broken up. Yeah, but she told me she loved me six months ago. Right. Like, they, right. you have to keep sliding back to the past yeah why is that what is that denial is that denial yeah. how come how come mm -hmm. stupid people always want to engage in it do you know what i mean yeah, i'm just trying to think what that it's mechanism is weird a sort of, it's a perseveration really weird sort of cling to well, it's, it doesn't want it, it doesn't want to acknowledge reality it's like yeah, yeah no, no, the, but, but you don't understand yeah, and I'm going to impress you with my, the real the reality as I say it must be. And they'll go, they'll go like, you know, before I got strung out on speed, I was a good student and a good athlete. And, and then you go, well, you got to get into rehab. And then they'll go back to before. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Well, there you go. That's it. That's the week. I want to thank uh, Brian for doing a great job on the phones all week long. Tara, don't t call me Tara, goddammit, although she's in, like, uh, Pakistan DC, yeah. or something. Where'd she go? D.C. Went to D.C.? Mm -hmm. That chick travels more than uh, anybody I know makes less than $9 an hour and works two hours a day. Uh. I gotta do that math. What a life. I want to thank uh, Junior, 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 Junior. Junior, 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 producer, Junior, 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 helper, Lauren, for doing a uh, fantabulous job all week. And, of course, uh, producer Anne for uh, putting her feminine stink all over the show. And, of course, the magic fingered ones, the Liberace of the potentiometers, engineer Anderson, who we found out tonight was an ass baby. <laughs> so, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Why do plumbers get paid so much? Well, because life would suck if we wasn't around. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.